All right. All right, we're back going to start working on the uh, Mercedes again. We're down to our block sanding process now that we have to do. We've had primer on the car for about two weeks, and I, I like to let the primer set so it has time to cure and shrink. These primers today do not shrink as much as the old style lacquer primers do, but it's still good to let it sit as long as you can. If you've got the time to let the car sit for a couple months before you start to block sand it, all the better. We've had two weeks of curing time on this primer and that should be plenty for us to go ahead and get started on this. I don't think we'll get too much shrink that shrinkage on this paint. And uh, we've got our, our tools ready. We're going to go at it first with 180 grit sandpaper. And we're going to use different blocks. And this is, a, this is a narrow rectangular block that we'll use to get in some areas. There's even times where you need a paint stick to get at some, some, some fine edges and some, some really tight areas. So we'll use a paint stick wrapped with paper. We've got a long flat board and the longer the board the better for when you have long panels such as this hood where we've got a long area because you want to get your board to be able to slide and cover as much area as possible. That makes sure you get the area flat and straight and that's what we're going for. Then we've got our rounded block for doing our curved areas such as down here next to the headlight area. So we can get down inside of that curve and still get a nice flat sanded area using our and, curved block. And we, we have to use this. And this one, yep, this one is for getting in small tight areas. It's just a, it's a flat, thinner block. It has a little bit of give to it so it can, it can work around some curved areas such as the front of our headlight. If you can conform it to that curve and you'll still get a nice flat sanded area. And again we've got another mid-sized flat block for doing smaller shorter areas such as here. We can use this on here. Make sure we get all of our primer flat. Well we don't really have to worry about sanding inside of the headlight area. But we want to make sure we get, we've got our guide coat on already. This has been cured too, dried up real nice. I put this on right after I sprayed the primer on so it's dry. The guide coat again is going to show us where any areas that still need attention are. Little low spots, little nicks, little, little chips here and there that may need some extra filler. We'll go ahead and fix those, no, reapply not. some more primer, reblock it, and then it'll be ready for one final coat of another type of primer. I, I, I want to talk. What are you going to talk? All right, you go ahead and tell the people how we're going to sand the car. So we have to um, sand this side of the car, so we we have to get some, we already got primer on it. We got so the primer on it, so now we're going to sand it and make it smooth. Yep. All and, right. And then we have to do this, Mhm. Mm because it's, it's a little bit bumpy. We have to do the whole car. We got to sand the whole car. Oh, and then we already did painting on this, mm -hmm. so we we have enough paint. And then we have these sticks to uh, put the the um the primer the the um the, the dust off of it. It's the dust makes the primer turn into dust, doesn't it? And then and, the, and under the car we have to. This this is leaking so so um all right so so one thing we want to remember too I, I'm not done talking oh I'm sorry you're not done talking well you finish with your finish up because I got one more thing to tell the people and now uh, we got this on because this is um the headlight to blink and then we have this to paint like this mm -hmm. like um this okay and then, then dip it then we have to do this to slide it and then dodge it okay very good well there you have it one more thing you may think well why can't i just use my da and sand this down real quick and get moving on with the process technically you can it all depends on what kind of paint job you want in the end if you want to have a nice flat straight surface you have got to do a hand blocking process a DA will sand the paint down. It'll fill in small imperfections with the primer, leaving the primer behind. 
but it's just not going to give you the flat area or the flat surface that you really want to have for a really nice paint job. So no DA yet, all hand blocking, no air tools. This has to be done by hand. You get the feel for it. You're going to get the best results that way. And, um, and hit that subscribe button and we'll see you later. That's right. All right, I've been sanding away on this trunk lid. I wanted to start at the back of the car. I'm going to work my way forward. But I just wanted to show you <clears throat> what the process is. So I've been sanding this, and the guide coat is doing its job. As you can see right here, I've got a little bit of guide coat still showing. So that means I've got a very slight low area right here. And we've got another spot up here in the corner. And a little... Just a little spot right here, and then another area over here, one right here. So that's not too bad. I'm pretty pleased with this so far because this trunk lid was a mess. It had a lot, of, a lot of dents in it here and here in the center, and a lot of little small look like hail damage to it. So I was able to, with the initial body work, get most of that right. And this is what this, this process does, is it shows any little small areas that still need a little bit of attention. So we're going to mix up some uh, polyester putty, and we'll just put a very slight skim coat over these areas that are still showing the guide coat. And then we'll block those down, and those areas will get just a little bit more primer applied to be reblocked and checked again. Alright, so after block sanding our feather fill primer. Uh, I identified any low areas and repaired those with a, just a light skim coat of polyester filler. As you can see the hood was probably the worst because I've and I've reprimed those areas I repaired and re-guide coated them <clears throat> so that I can re-block sand all this and make sure that everything is nice and smooth and flat and we've got no more low spots. So we get just a few areas to go back over again. And then we can go ahead and recoat the entire car Papa. with a 2K surface primer. Yes, Ashton. I wanna, I wanna see you in. You're, you're in. Say hello to everybody. Hello. So we'll uh, we'll top oh, coat again with a 2K surface primer, and that will allow me to go ahead and then sand this with a 400 grit on my DA sander hey, I, I wanna talk. and that'll leave it ready for paint. I, I want to talk. Talk. Go ahead, talk. So we got this, this primer on. So we, so we got, we got sanded right here. So we have to put some primer on here too. Mm -hmm. A little bit of black there. So, we have to we have to resand all that. And we got this. It's a little bit choppy. So we have to do all of this. It's, it's a little bumpy too. And look at the, and it's a black right here. So we put the wheels back on. Mm-hmm. So it's almost ready. We put this on. Mm -hmm. and we have this to to uh, fix the bottle of the bottle. Okay, so we're ready to start sanding again. No, I'm not just talking. Oh, well, we gotta get sanding so we can get the car done. Okay, well, let's get sanding. Okay, we've got the Mercedes back in the booth after getting our block sanding process done 
our repairs on our slightly low areas or any any other areas that needed further attention as far as the bodywork goes and we've reblocked those areas so I want to talk a little bit about what you see here and if you look close you can see most of the primer that was on the car that we block sanded is not on the car anymore so that means <clears throat> that this primer has been doing its job and that is to also help to level out these panels by filling in any very slight imperfections that are still in the surface that they need to fill so what I did is uh, one step with the 180 grit paper on the long boards different long boards to uh, achieve this and then yesterday I went one step further I re-guide coated it with a light coat of guide coat and I went over the entire car one more time with a 220 grit and I did that just to knock down some of the sharpness on this on the sanding scratches that would be in that primer so the purpose today is to apply a 2k primer it's a top coating primer and that primer is going to fill in those scratches and then we'll do a final sanding with a 400 grit paper on our DA finishing DA now this is not a dead set way of going about prepping a car for paint there's several different methods you can do this is just the way I've, d I've done it for 20 some odd years now and it works for me I've not had any paint jobs come back well I've had to repaint one car one time but that was because the owner opted to use a cheaper brand of paint and then when he took the car home he left it sitting outside uncovered in the weather and the clear coat didn't hold up that was the only time I've ever had a paint job come back Papa, if I were to talk. so when we do our 400 grit we're doing we're, we're serving two purposes we're filling in those scratches we're leaving a nice finish for the top colors to go on we're leaving a uniform finish for the top colors to go on you don't want to have your you don't want to try and paint right over top of this especially if you've got bare metal spots like we've got here a few on the hood those of course I'm going to have to spray some epoxy primer on before we do our our top coat primer but you want to have a nice even uniform base for your color to go on which is most important if you're spraying a somewhat transparent color now the red we're putting on this car should be pretty solid and it shouldn't have too much of a problem hiding things um, but you don't want to have that chance that you may see a darker or lighter spot through your top color so that's another reason for doing the final primer on this car and getting everything nice and uniform <clears throat> so we've got a good base for our color coats to go on all right here you see it this is the final primer coatings that will go on this car we put two coats of a 2k fill primer over top of uh, our repairs that we made and our first primer coats that we put on <clears throat> And again, this is the this is the coat that will get done with a 400 grit, and this will leave our surface ready for the final paint. The next step is going to be unwrapping all this, and then we're going to start to clean up our door jams and our hood opening area, and around the trunk opening, and uh, around our top opening here. Get all those areas cleaned up and ready for paint dashboard where the color needs to change we're going to go ahead and do that get that ready and we'll finally be able to start putting some color on this old girl so I want to thank everyone again for following along this long process that you've seen a couple times now of uh, getting the car prepped and ready for paint if you uh, hit that bell notification you'll be able to see the continuation when we start to put some color on the car and really start to see how all that hard work has paid off. I'm really happy with the way the primer laid out 
as it was still wet, I could look down the panels and see they're really nice and straight now. All our body lines are nice and crisp. Everything looks good here on the car. I'm really expecting this paint job to really come out nice and the customer to be ecstatic when he sees it. So thanks for following along. We'll be back shortly with some more work on this and we'll see you then. Yeah.